Hello! So let's get straight to the point. Here's why this is the Dream Trio base. It's a 50 plus rocket raid, meaning that on a Trio server nearly nobody can touch it. But it's very cheap to build and maintain for that strength. It features modern ramp peak downs with absolutely perfect vision all around the compound, combined with a powerful 360 shooting floor with multiple separate angles to any single point. In addition, it's easy and straightforward to build in terms of the build order on a wipe. Starting and expanding always feels effortless. It has three peripheral side bunkers, meaning that in a failed raid you'll always have a reserve of materials and kits to seal and continue the wipe. Also, there's a surprising abundance of storage space in that little frame, and the footprint is compact enough that attackers need to take all four TCs to grief the main structure or open any of the side bunkers for free. Beyond that, it's easy and simple to compound with turrets that absolutely have to be dealt with by attackers, and it features all the necessary utilities, like a heli-garage, room for furnaces, and multiple beds and lockers. I've honestly never seen a trio base I like more, and I'm not saying that just because I built it. It's just an incredibly powerful base that gives you everything for pretty cheap. I've used it three times now and it really breaks trio servers where people always underestimate it and fail raids. And if you want to try it out yourself, let's get to building. First, you should know that this base is a conversion of my temple solo base. If you know that one, much of this will be instantly familiar to you. This will also be a faster paced build, so if you want slower pacing, more tips and explanations, watch the temple. It all starts with six triangles. We'll be using final tier materials for this demonstration. An armored compartment will be set for the TC, and HQM walls will go all around, except for the last one, it being sheet metal. The ceilings will be HQM, and it's very important to align them correctly, to avoid the triangle splash bug. A stone window frame will cover the TC, and storage shelves will go in front of it. A stone shelf here will serve as a jump up to the second floor, and the whole floor will be filled with garage doors. On the second floor, the chute down will be armored on both sides, always with a stone shelf, and the whole floor is closed with metal walls. When starting out the wipe, I usually leave this side open as an entrance, closing it when ready to expand upwards. This here will be the chute up. Next to it will go a metal ceiling, followed by armored ceilings, all properly aligned. To finish this floor, another double shelf will go under the chute up, and garage doors will fill this floor as well. At this point I'd recommend honeycombing the base before continuing to the third floor. Now on the third floor, the chute will be of sheet metal, adding the always a shelf, followed by two metal walls, a metal single door frame, and two more walls. The ceilings will be of metal, with the exception of a ladder hatch right above the door. To finish this third floor, the entrance floor, two garage doors will cover the chute down, and a four-box windowed loot room will go on the right of the chute. At this point it may be useful to build some temporary wooden defenses on the roof to be hatcheted out when the shooting floor is ready to be built. So let's prepare the roof bunkers. Looking towards the door, go to the right of it and place one metal foundation here, but not here. To the left of the bunker preparation, build two foundations. Continue this pattern around the base until you have this shape. These gaps will all house conditional roof bunkers. So, at each gapped foundation, build a metal compartment like so, with a stone shelf. The metal door frame must be rotated to get these conditional side shapes.
where you have two foundations, embed a stone wall and close with metal walls. Now you can close it all with ceilings, always making sure they're properly aligned. To get properly aligned ceilings above the bunker gap, place a temporary twig wall and build an HQM triangle from it. Then add metal triangle roofs all around as very cheap honeycomb. Now to finalize the bunkers and get our compound going, we need to build external TCs. From this gap, build a triangle followed by 9 squares. Destroy all but the last square and from it, build inwards with triangles, like so until you can place a metal square foundation right against the gap. To finalize the bunker, first close it with a metal wall, then add a triangle foundation to the right and a metal frame here. Then open the bunker by placing a twig roof here, go up and attach a metal triangle frame to the inner socket. And that's the bunker done. This frame is here to deter soft siding, but if you want a foolproof solution, this works too. Now for the external TCs themselves. From the bunker foundation, build out two stone foundations, a metal one, and two more stone ones. Then add two triangle foundations, stone and metal, upon which to build a basic external TC enclosure, like so. With that done, return from the external TC to the base with metal frames. Now the gatehouses. From this second stone square, add two triangles to the left and continue like so. This triangle behind the gatehouse will contain a turret looking towards the base. Closing the compound will now require 12 high walls and I suggest practicing placing them exactly as shown on a build server, because compounds are quite easy to screw up. Now you'll be wanting to place metal barricades on these gatehouses, but I suggest to first build three levels of door frames like so. We'll be needing them for the shooting floor and inaccurate barricade placement may obstruct you from building them later. Also, since we don't want any nakeds easily absconding with our hard-earned farm, you can use whatever electrical junk you find and place it here, as it prevents any kind of building and is quite difficult to remove. And optionally, you may want to do what I do, giving up one of the gatehouses and instead of it building it like this, adding a square foundation to the right and closing the whole thing in to be used as a minicopter garage. And now for my favorite part. Now back in the day I made a video showing how to add a powerful catwalk shooting floor and flank base combination to any base in Rust, which may be useful to you as it is a powerful substitution for the standard shooting floor. Here we will do a reduced version of that for very cheap. First get rid of this temporary nightmare and add another metal cylinder leading up, which I like furnishing with two beds and lockers. Climbing to the roof of the main base, build two triangles leading to the external frames. Then, on the frames themselves, build a floor and a floor frame like so. Close these two squares in with five window frames and the triangle corridor with walls, with a double door leading to the peaks. With this done on three sides, the core hexagon can be closed in making sure, of course, to have a chute leading to the roof. You can now use these corridors for beds and lockers. Now let's make the awesome ramp peak downs. First, you'll need some twig scaffolding. Now, place the first ramp like so, and the second ramp continuing the slope of the first. The support structure can now be removed as the second ramp receives stability from the first. 
So why did I opt for this version of a shooting floor rather than the traditional one? Well, unlike the traditional peak down shooting floors, these type of shooting floors are completely sealed. No shortcuts to get in. And if you die here, your weapon will never fall through. While with regular peaks, your gun will... Woo! <coughs> Didn't expect that. <laughs> but I guess it proves the point. Also, when taking heli, you won't ever need to replace stupid doors and locks at 250 frags a pop. And the best part is the vision. You have perfect vision into your compound, and the spread out nature of the peaks means you can usually target a single point from all three peaks, which is very strong because it makes you very difficult to pin down. The only downside is that you can't exit the base through these, but I mean, just be creative. Double doors may feel a little cramped at first, but as soon as you get garage doors you'll find that the base feels a lot more spacious. Keep it in mind that this footprint holds a lot of garage doors, so I would beeline for those. Now regarding mobility, if you're having trouble jumping from chests to shelves like this, do the following. In F1 console, enter this command. Then enter this command. This will make all sorts of jumps in Rust much easier. Jumps you were previously failing, you should now succeed every time. I sometimes forget that not every player knows every trick. I hope this helps some of you. For best results, consider upgrading some of the shooting floor supports, maybe even some floors also, though if attackers feel that they have to spend rockets to remove your shooting floor, then the shooting floor has done its job. About upgrading the external DCs, I probably won't go beyond this. But if you feel you have to, maybe this works. And that's it, all done. All that's left to do is wish you good luck on your trio adventure. I'm fairly certain this base is gonna take you safely through the wipe, with great style even. It actually never failed me. I find that people do tend to greatly underestimate just how tough this cookie is to crumble in actual wipe situations. So good luck. Goodbye for now, and blessed be.